Another season of Leeds United in the Championship. A video I really don't want to make. I've just got back from Wembley, but I want to talk about today's game and what went wrong. We'll start with the performance. The performance from Leeds today, I think, can best be described as lacklustre. We actually had a lot of possession, played in the Southampton half for a lot of the game, but just didn't create any out-and-out -out chances. It looked like players were afraid to shoot, Somerville, in particular, while he was on the pitch, was useless. And for a player that has been our best throughout this season, it was really disappointing to see that from him. A lot of people, especially in the crowd around me, you could hear grumblings of, oh, well, he knows he's going, he knows that he's off now, so it doesn't really matter so much. But I really don't think that's the case, to be honest. I think sometimes the occasion can get to you. It doesn't matter how good you've been all year. Sometimes it just doesn't click on a certain day. And it felt like that for all of our attacking players today. The only attacking players that I thought had a good game were Rutter throughout. He showed passion, he showed energy, and he showed willingness to actually take on a man, unlike the rest of the attackers. And Dan James, once he came on, he was very, very good. Direct, actually put a shot in and looked amazing, to be honest. I think we'll probably lose Somerville now in the summer. Dan James can step in and fill that role. He is quite prone to the odd injury, but he's had a very strong season. If we can keep a hold of him, that'll look really good. Ampadu today was poor. It was clearly his mistake that led to the Southampton goal. Completely out of position for no particular reason. Pressed forward when he didn't need to and left Armstrong, one of the most dangerous players in the championship, free to slot it in the back of the net. I literally said yesterday in my prediction video for this game that Armstrong is the most dangerous Southampton player. How he can be left unmarked to run through on the Leeds goal is absolutely beyond me. Wembley was an experience within itself, to be honest. We lost, but I've not been to Wembley, at least that I can remember in my entire life. So it was quite a fun day out. I did enjoy it. The atmosphere was really good from both fans, to be honest. Southampton fans were much better than I expected. Uh, Leeds fans probably a little bit worse than I expected, but it's really hard when you concede a first half goal. My section was pretty lively throughout the game, but I do think the crowd could have been better overall. As I said, it's tough when you're losing in the playoff final. And it does also really irritate me the number of corporate tickets that are given at Wembley, because when you look at that middle section throughout the game, there's just practically no one there. And I think both teams should get what, at least a 95% share of the total tickets in the stadium. And it, I think it's over 10,000 is given to corporate, which are... It might not be corporate, but it's a thousand pound a ticket, which practically is, isn't it? Because everyday working class people, which is what the game is built on, cannot afford those tickets. And to be honest, it is quite disgusting. I think now there's a question around Daniel Fark for me. And a lot of Leeds fans might disagree. We're the first team in, what is it, over a decade to get 90 points and not get promoted. I don't think it's been a bad season. And you can say, well, he inherited a mess, but the mess was fixed very quickly. After three or four games, we had a superstar championship squad throughout this year. And I feel like we've bottled it twice. We bottled it for automatic promotions. We had so many opportunities to get that. Drawing against Sunderland, losing against Blackburn, getting tonked by QPR. We should have been in those automatic spots. Fair play to Ipswich. Ipswich massively deserve it, and I'm very happy to them. But that's a failure on Fark's side. After the form we had following Christmas up to the international break, we really should have been in those top two spots. And the fact we didn't clinch it has to be on the manager. And I think the game management has been quite poor, especially in this last stretch of games. You've seen it today. You knew that Somerville and Nonto weren't creating anything in the first half. At Wembley, players have one opportunity, and I think a few changes should have been made at half-time because that opportunity wasn't being taken by them. And the changes were made later on. Dan James came on and changed the game. We looked really good in an attacking sense once he was on, but it was too little, too late. And that's been a case a lot of the time. I'm not saying Fark should get fired, but I wouldn't be offended by it either. Let me know in the comments, Leeds fans, Really interested to know, do you think that Fark should keep his job after this? It's a bottled automatics, bottled promotion. I don't know. It's a really, really hard one to say. I don't know where I am on this. And I think the most worrying thing about not getting promoted for me is 
what's going to happen with our squad from this point because we're in an awful position FFP wise this is nothing to do with the 49ers ownership this is to do with previous Leeds ownership but now we're going to have to sell a lot of our star players some of those going to go none of those going to go and I think we'll probably have to sell one more maybe Meslier if anyone comes in for him Rutter if anyone offers big money I think the problem is Rutter is classed as a 30 plus million pound asset. So selling him, unless you get a big money offer, could actually damage FFP even more. Also, we've got a whole squad of useless players coming back. Off the top of my head, Christensen, Aronson, Rocker. Do we want any of these players back? They're on practically Premier League wages. Very, very long contracts for a lot of them. Can we get rid of them? There's a few players in the squad already that it's probably about time we move on in. Patrick Bamford, I love him sometimes, I hate him sometimes, but he's not a regular starting championship striker, is he? He's not going to take us to the top two. He's not capable of that. But anyway, a really, really tough day at Wembley. Um, sorry, this video has probably not been as upbeat and excited uh, as my usual ones, but this is football. This is what football is all about. And I, d I did have a good day, even though we lost. And a lot of football fans might laugh at that. I don't get to see my team play at Wembley very often. And I've just got to appreciate that moment. And I think it's been one of the most entertaining championship seasons in many, many years. I don't think it'll be quite as good next year. I don't think the teams coming down will be as good. It's hard to say. Luton, maybe Burnley have lost company now. Uh, maybe a video coming on that soon because it's a bit crazy that he's ended up at Bayern Munich. But yeah, I'm not sure the championship will be to the same level. <sighs> Impossible to say, but it's a fantastic league. One of the best leagues in the world. Uh, you can see me fetching for silver linings here. Southampton fans, congratulations. Leeds fans, myself, commiserations. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe. I appreciate everyone who interacts with the channel. We're going to be posting a lot of football content throughout the summer. Euros, Championship, Premier League, transfers, everything you can imagine. So please do subscribe. Have a good night. Peace.